To clean the head surface, use a flat head like this to scrape it off. Slowly to scrape it without scratching. Kind of did this already. Now valves, these valves, to clean them, the best way to do is spray carburetor cleaner or fuel injector cleaners. So what I do is uh, use this and spray it here. If you're opening the valves, it's easier to clean them when they're open, scrape it off. But either way, this carb, carb cleaner, you spray this, which I did last night. And then once it's dry, this comes off very easily, as you can see. It's all loose. All loose. Now I want to show you something. These two, most of the valves has okay mark this this has this one and this one has uh, the exhaust valves has kind of huge deposit of white uh, sulfur kind of thing so I think this two this one and this one number one and four had wrong spark plugs I did find two different types of spark plugs here and two are not, they are high temperature, so they are actually burning at high temperature. Anyway, so no, uh, make sure the spark plugs are right. Once you scrape and screw clean, then <clears throat> you can vacuum it a little bit. Vacuum through the holes, make sure there is no debris inside, and everything comes out. Now, what I also do is this is P220, very fine grit sandpaper. So I also do a little bit of uh, very mild sanding just to take the dirt off, not the head surface off. The outside edges, like this. And the same thing on the other side, in the engine block side, like here. So I sprayed the cleaner already. They are nice and dry now. This thing has to be precise, not to damage the head or not to sand the surface of the head. And these should come off now. As I sprayed the carb cleaner, so it look nicely coming off. Very nicely coming off. This is toxic, so vacuum it, take it away nicely. So all of them should come off easily now. This one definitely was combustion was at much higher temperature. And signs of overcooking here and this one other two looks okay so clean the entire surface ideally do not use any steel brush because the pieces from the steel brush also breaks and goes in and can cause uh, future uh, clog so with a flat head like this in without sc scratching, not at the angle, flat surface. Uh, another tool that cleans very fast easily is a drywall mortar. Only the very big, bigger, uh, much bigger debris, not the very, very fine things uh, to clean them and end up damaging the head. These are mostly coolant, corrosion from the coolant, I think. If you are not opening the valves, then 
go around the valves is very important. So use a sharp, uh, not too too sharp though, like a flathead canal, smaller flathead, which I don't have right now. And go around the valves, see what's coming. It's full of it's full of uh, you can say it's full of carbon. All of them full of carbon. So that surface has to be nice and. Uh, nice and clean and this can be with the carburetor cleaner fuel injector cleaner sprayed these things will come off very easily we really don't need to take like this is not gonna make a huge difference away from the valves uh, especially if you spray the carburetor cleaner then once the car runs this thing comes off it just burns everything and takes it out So this is kind of clean now. The ideally to clean a valve, uh, the <clears throat> cylinder head, is to send it to the machine shop. They will actually machine it uh, nice and smooth. But uh, the difference is very subtle. So especially there is a way to stop any imperfection, minute imperfection, when you install the head gasket. I'll show that. I'll show that how to do that and i have done this in the past without any difficulty and honda engines are actually very good the head and the block if it's a ford that might be a problem because their head warps uh, more so anyway uh, this is how it is very important if you're taking the valve seats valves off then the valve seat has to be nice and clean both sides, so the head side and the back of the valve, because that's where the air is stopped. And as I said, like uh, the entire the rims and the back of it has to be very clean. Now we'll do the other side. So for the uh, pistons, we'll take them out and clean the change the rings anyway. So hang in there to to watch more about how to change the piston rings. Now for the head, same thing. First we uh, sprayed some carburetor cleaner and comes out nicely. Check for damage and wiped off all this. Scrape with a scrape like this without damaging any surface. any bigger pieces comes off and then very slightly because we will not machine this Now the entire surface is clean without causing any damage to it. Uh, you don't want to sand, you don't want to scrape too hard, very mildly, gently so that the carbon, black carbon comes off and often spray carburetor cleaner or injector cleaner that actually melts it down faster and comes off. If it were an aluminum head before, then you might want to use the, as I said, you might want to use the scrape and scrape it off nicely, smoothly. Now I'll uh, turn the engine so that the other two pistons uh, come to the top and we'll clean them. And uh, so as the edge here, we don't want to hone the cylinder because we'll be using the same uh, uh, 
size of the original uh, piston rings so if we hone it actually sometimes leaks more loses compression so we don't want to hone I will just wipe it clean it properly so as all this there's no scratch that's going outward outward scratch is worse actually they leak air so remember even if you are sanding do not go outside outward then if you if there is any minute minute scratch it'll actually let the air come out sideward this way is better sideward only only lateral not longitudinal and remember these arrows in future i'll show the use of these these arrows they're pointing towards the timing bell side so pistons when they're taken out and reinstalled these arrows must be facing that way each of them and the piston has to go in the exactly same so one at a time is better this is a quick and dirty way to do it this is not the professional professional high grade way that costs three thousand five thousand dollars to rebuild an engine or engine head this is uh, but result is so good that uh, we ask the question is it worth spending three thousand dollars sending to the machine shop and doing all this up to the spec on an engine that'll probably go another hundred thousand miles or hundred fifty thousand miles no matter what before the head has had to be redone so hope this helps so now turn the engine a little bit to bring the other two up and these two goes down now before you did that before cranking it I had to vacuum it make sure there's no debris otherwise if there's a metal piece or something it's going to scratch the cylinder and uh, cylinder sleeve so after that spray a little bit of that making sure it doesn't go in in the uh, oil chamber all the oil will be changed anyway yet I try to cause minimum jet damage so then I'll uh, let it sit like this although most of it will come off now yeah very satisfying most of it will come off not yet but I'll uh, spray a little more and and uh, definitely there is a lot of oil leak in this uh, cylinder head and uh, issues with it I'll, uh, spray a little more and before I clean them see what's coming it's full of uh, Oh, this comes out very easy now okay so now clean it and uh, watch how to install the head of course uh, there will be a separate uh, version for that how to install the cylinder head and head gasket and there I'll show how to prevent any minor leak from warp edge or scratch this kind of things these days most of the cylinder head gaskets are made of steel multi-layer steel and that makes it more vulnerable to leakage so I'll show how to prevent that so hang in there thanks for watching please uh, share and subscribe and uh, don't forget to like it if it uh, if you like it thank you